All right, welcome back uh, to the second lecture um, of section one here. Uh, let me move this so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, so remember, we were talking about Mendel's experiment on pea plants. We were also talking about uh, kind of the basics of genetics. We were talking about uh, genes. We were talking about alleles, traits that are passed on, uh, all those different things. So what we're going to be talking about now is, is what Mendel actually concluded uh, from his experiments. Okay, so um, we were talking about that genes were uh, on chromosomes and that genes were passed on from parent to offspring. Okay, uh, the second conclusion that Mendel um, concluded about his experiment, just with the P generation to the F1 generation, is the principle of dominance. So this really, um, this really explains why we just see green or why we just see one thing after the first cross of the P generation. So this principle states that alleles are dominant and others are recessive. So what does that mean? Dominant is going to mask the recessive uh, allele. So if an organism has both dominant allele and recessive allele uh, for a particular trait, uh, the organism is going to exhibit a dominant characteristic. So what we've been talking about here is the green and yellow cross. Green, so we saw green in the F1 generation. Every plant was green. So therefore, green is dominant over the recessive allele yellow. Another example here uh, is purple flowers crossing with white flowers, and we get just purple flowers in the F1 generation. That means that purple must be dominant over the white flower. And that's the principle of dominance. That's gonna be very important here to see what we actually get in what's called the phenotype of the um, next generation. Okay, so next we'll talk about a genetic segregation. Um, so, after, after uh, Mendel crossed uh, the P generation, he wasn't done. He, wasn't, he didn't stop after crossing the parent, um, parent plants. He, he wondered, he, he had a desire to know what had happened if he were to go on with crossing these plants. Okay, why did the, the yellow pod disappear? And that's what he was trying to figure out here. So he wondered, had the recessive allele disappeared or were they still present in the new plant that would become? So to find this out, um, to see if the recessive allele is still there within those that F1 generation, he allowed the F1 hybrids um, to self-pollinate. Um, so that means that he just let them grow and they were to self-pollinate um, each other in order to form the next generation of plants, which is called the F2 generation. So this is coming from two F1 plants producing an F2 generation. So when looking at the F2 generation, uh, the recessive allele actually reappeared. Um, so that's where this genetic segregation comes into play. And we'll talk about that more on the next slide. Uh, so he discovered that the F2 generation offspring showed about a three to one ratio um, of dominant over recessive. So there was three dominant, so that would be three maybe green pods to every one yellow pod. Um, so it showed back up. So why did this happen? Um, so we didn't see any yellow in the first in the F1 generation, but then they re, reappear back in the F2 generation. So what's going on here? And that's what he's trying to figure out. And this is what he came uh, to know. Uh, so Mendel assumed that the dominant allele uh, had masked the recessive allele in the F1 generation. So since we know that we were dealing with a green pod and a yellow pod, and we crossed, and we know that green was dominant over yellow, but these, these F1 generation had to have some type of genetic information or genes from the yellow plant. So therefore, these held uh, some information from the yellow pod, but 
the green masked the yellow. So therefore, we only saw green plants. Um, so in the F2 generation, the recessive allele showed back up again. Okay, and this is where uh, he concluded that the, the law of segregation had come into play. Um, and this is what the law of segregation is. The alleles from F1 generation form gametes uh, from which had separated or segregated from each other, forming offspring with both dominant and recessive traits. So the F1 generation, remember, had um, genes or information uh, passed on from both parents. And then um, within the, the process of forming new new generations or new offspring, um, that information separated from each other and therefore it formed different offspring with both dominant and recessive traits. So hopefully this kind of explains more along the lines of uh, law of segregation. So what I have here is, a, is what we'll get to in the next section, but uh, it will explain what law of segregation is. So this would be the um, P generation. P generation is dominant and recessive. So this would be our, our round or wrinkled seeds. Um, we see here that that round will be dominant. Um, we know that because of the capital S. Capitalization always comes, uh, is, is considered dominant over the lowercase. Um, the lowercase letters. So these are going to cross. What we're going to see is gametes of the S, the big S, and the small s. We know that all the F1 generation is going to have the, um, the term of big S and small s. So we know that big S is going to be dominant over small s big S is going to be dominant over small s and all of these. So we're going to get all round plants. But they hold the recessive gene here. They, re they hold the recessive gene. So when these, the F1 generation, forms gametes, it is going to separate from each other. So we have some little s's, we have some big s's, some little s's, some big s's. And these are going to combine together and uh, I'll show this more to you later in the next video, but they are going to go through gamete formation. So they're going to bond with each other. And what we actually do is in math, we like, like in math, we FOIL. So we're going to take this P, this, this small s, this P, this gamete from the P plant over here, and we're going to combine with that plant and this plant. And what we see is we're going to get small s, small s, which is going to just have the recessive alleles uh, for this plant. So therefore, we're going to get wrinkled. And this one will be round. And then we take this big S and we go, we foil that through. And we're going to get big S and big S small s. So therefore, we're going to get three. We're going to get three round plants to one wrinkled plant. And that's where he saw in the F2 generation, so these are, the, these are the offspring of the F2 generation, where we get that three to one ratio of dominant to recessive. Okay, so if you have any questions over this, please come and ask me. Okay, I know it, could be, it can be kind of confusing at first. Um, we will get more into this in section two, and it will it'll hopefully click for you and we're going to be using these Punnett squares uh, to find the different uh, gametes that something could uh, produce. Okay, so uh, that's the end of, of lecture 12.1. Um, uh, good luck on your mastery quiz. Please ask me questions if you have any.